Hello and welcome in to my presentation of the seed of culture that was sown in the field of entrepreneurial organization as part of our seminar Tilling the Field at the University of Viadrina. And the paper I am about to present to you today is quite different from the ones that we have previously discussed as it is taking quite a different approach. And what it is doing is that they're taking a grounded theory approach to dissecting a phenomenon that has occurred in a small community uh, somewhere in Argentina. The paper is called Living in the Fishbowl, Generating an Entrepreneurial Culture in a Local Community in Argentina. It was written by Ignacy Marti from the Said Business School, David Courpasson from the Emlion Business School, Saulo Dubard Barbosa in, from the Emlion Business School too, and it has been cited 78 times whilst it was published in the Journal of Business Venturing in a special issue, volume 28, uh, in January 2013. As for the authors, we have Ignacy Marti, who is a professor of social sciences and innovation. His research interest is mostly social innovation, exclusion and marginalization, entrepreneurship, organization theory, uh, power and politics, and more. We also have David Courpasson, who is a professor of sociology. His research interest is mainly on powers and limitations in organizations, organization theory, social constructs, and others. And then we also have Saulo Barbosa, who is a professor of entrepreneurship with a research interest in decision-making, motivation, social change, social entrepreneurship, and human development. Let's have a quick look at the journal. The paper was published in the Journal of Business Venturing, and that is providing a scholarly forum for sharing useful and interesting theories, narratives, and interpretations of the antecedents, mechanisms, and or consequences of entrepreneurship. It is published on a bi-monthly basis, received the A ranking from the VHB, and has an impact factor of 7,590, according to the Yale Severe. So, how is the paper structured? To start the paper off, the authors reflected on past research with a focus on communities. They present and explain community concepts developed by the German sociologist Ferdinand Tönnies in the early 20th century, and proceed by explaining their methodology in the paper. They give a brief summary of the grounded theory approach and then describe what the fishbowl is, how it developed from what it was to what it is today, and then present the findings of their research on the phenomenon and what implications it comes with. Now let me tell you about the grounded theory approach. Grounded theory is quite special and that it doesn't come with a predefined research question. You don't have hypotheses and don't want to prove something true or false. It's a qualitative method, letting the researchers dive into finding out why something happened the way it did and make sense of it. The authors did exactly that, and as part of it, they conducted 77 semi-structured interviews, lasting over two hours on average. They also conducted field research and observed the subjects of their study in meetings and other gatherings. Additionally, they went through archives, newspapers and other existing media. Next, let me tell you about the fishbowl. It is a district called Virgen Misionera in the city of San Carlos de Briloche. It started out, and still is, rather poor in comparison to its surroundings. The city itself developed into a rich tourism destination with mountains, waterside and a rich culture. Virgen Misionera, however, started out as a large patch of uninhabited fields less than a century ago. It's always been rather isolated, only saw slow development and migration towards it with one of its oldest witnesses, remembering a time when it was a community of just 10 families and nothing but fields, where nowadays it has a population of 2,200 people. For decades now, it has been facing a huge issue though. Many of the properties in the district are not owned by the people living on them, and hence Virgen Misionera is the focus of lots of evictions. But the fish? They don't want to move. They want to stay in their bowl. They don't really know how the system works, but they've always lived inside the bowl. They never had a school before, like the money, the resources, they don't even have a steady supply of water or electricity. A lot of them are unemployed and just get by. They have not even been an integrated part of the city, but see themselves secluded from the rest of the city. Whilst they're mostly happy with their isolation and not being part of the rich society of Briloche, they fight for the right to the properties where their families have lived for decades and want to work towards gaining their property rights. 
But what happened to the fishbowl that was worth investigating? Similar districts and situations exist in multiple parts of the world, but in Virgen Misionera something caused change. That something, or rather someone, was a Catholic priest called Father Kurulev. With a few other church members, he moved to Virgen Misionera on a mission to change its predicament. This close-knit community was in need of education and stability. So, Father Kurulev made it his goal to bring education to the district of Virgen Misionera. With his knowledge and contacts, he led to the foundation of the first school in the district, giving its inhabitants, young and old, a place to come together for discourse. This was the first and most important nudge for Virgen Misionera's snowball effect. The increase of discourse and knowledge then led to the emergence of initiatives, new ventures, a second school, and even spilling over to other places in the region where people profited from and took part in the discourse happening in Virgen Misionera. People were pressured to leave their homes and forfeit the properties their families lived on for decades, but they pursued more and more knowledge with the help of the strangers to turn around their situations and bit by bit take over the rights to the properties they lived on. Connected to this effect, there are three very important concepts regarding the community of the district that the authors talk about and use to make sense of what exactly led to what happened in Virgen Misionera. The main two concepts are called Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. There are actually two ways of describing communities in German. Gemeinschaft means community, also in the literal sense, and Gesellschaft is something more like a society. Gemeinschaft describes something a lot closer, like a close-knit community that we can also see exclusively in what Virgen Misionera was before the strangers appeared. There's a, there's a huge degree of emotional connection between its members and everyone is strongly connected like a family or a kinship. Gesellschaft, on the other hand, describes more how people are part of a society where there is more distance between people. Its members are more rational and there is a bit more anonymity going on, like when living in a city or even at the Via Dringa, being part of the university life. A third concept connected to the study is social worlds, and simply speaking, social worlds are fields of interest or shared traits like science, business, gaming, biking and other stuff. As part of those, we also have subworlds that can be generated in three ways. Budding off is when a group is generating differences from the original world. Splitting off is when that difference is also affecting ideologies. And the third option is intersection, which happens when two social worlds are overlapping and generate a new field. How do these concepts connect to the case of Virgen Misionera? Well, I created the model to visualize this a little bit better. Focus on the left side, where we have the community construct. If we have Gemeinschaft or Gesellschaft only, we don't have that intersection where we want the community to be. Pure Gesellschaft leads to too much alienation, pure Gemeinschaft leads to a certain degree of close-mindedness and does not foster progress. Virgen Misionera needed strangers to come in and become mediators for change, so the given input from the outsiders could be properly used by the locals to pursue their interests in new ways. Through that, subworlds were generated, entrepreneurs who build up the district, opening up shops, students who come together and fight for their rights and their voice, etc. Through the generation of subworlds, we are able to witness more and more people in the district becoming entrepreneurs. And through the strong feeling of Gemeinschaft, the collaboration and sharing of knowledge leads to efficient knowledge gains within the fishbowl. In the end, through working on their projects, the members of the community generate output and gather knowledge which in turn benefits the community as a whole and fosters growth and development. This continues as a steady process. I think the paper has done a really good job of making sense of the phenomenon through applying community concepts. It gives a rare insight into how an entrepreneurial culture can be created from the ground up. And on top of that, the paper also had great storytelling with weaving in parts of the interviews they conducted during the study. The main downside I found was the lack of practical implications really, because the paper looks at emerging ventures from a unique perspective but doesn't offer much in terms of advice. But through the connection to some fields of our seminar, I can see how the findings can be used and what they prove. The paper gives really interesting implications for organizations and their strategy, especially with how the active sharing of knowledge in the fishbowl led to greater achievements of the teams that were formed in Virgen Misionera. Sharing ambitions and having common incentives motivated the people of the district to become entrepreneurs and that led to a widespread entrepreneurization. The fishbowl itself is also a great example of an entrepreneurial ecosystem and how that works internally and externally. That's it for my presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Bye.